let's talk about education and spaces for education and transformation, uh, uh, the transformational possibilities of those spaces. In 1962, um, a Dutch architect named Aldo van Eyck was working on the design of a kindergarten, an orphanage, and he thought about it as a house. And I think he said a very profound thing. He said, for a house to be real, it should be like a small city. But also for a city to be real, it should be like a large house. Can we think of a school where we come to learn in those kind of broad terms? Can we think of a school as the world? Can we create the world in a school? And at the same time, can that mean that this, the world, which we know, is our school? Can we connect those two? Let's, let's begin by thinking in that context of scale of the world and scale of the school and the reciprocity of the two by thinking about what characteristics do we uh, really think of a great school environment can have. It needs to be active, engaging, interactive. It needs to be collaborative. It needs to be an integrated place. At the same time, we're thinking of all of us as students in that school, learning and knowledge. And how do we access that knowledge? We access it through problem-based learning, through team-based learning, group-based learning, and guided inquiry. We want the school to be student-centered, that its focus is really between the material and the place around the student. And how does a student engage with the, student, with the material? They engage visually. They engage intellectually. They engage with their sight, with their hearing. They engage in a kind of haptic, tactile way. But at the same time, the school needs to be flexible. It needs to adapt to un unknown and as, as yet in the undefined opportunities. And of course, the world we live in, it must be technological. It must be based uh, and recognize the kind of opportunities of, of technology and digital access. So how do we think of learning? It happens everywhere, not in the classroom. How do we design for it happening everywhere? It's very social. It's very connective. We, we, we gain information and understanding and knowledge and experience in so many ways. It's very social. It also is very private. It's together with the material. It should be comfortable. It should be a welcoming, safe, and comfortable environment. And of course, it should be challenging. So if we think of those characteristics of sight and sound and touch, we think of the material engaging the course material, but also our material and those of other students. And that interconnection and that interactivity and that collaborative process of engaging with all the senses and all the ways of engaging information and understanding, and all the material available in a sort of complex way. If we really then think about the school, UTS, and how we seek a new transformative environment, first of all, we're grounded in an extraordinary tradition over 100 years of history of academic achievement, academic excellence, extraordinary accomplishment. At the same time, that there is the, the condition of architectural ex excellence, which is embedded in this school, a school building that's over 100 years old that has been the kind of heart of UTS in a physical way for a long time. So building on that history of excellence and that architectural history of this, the architect of this building who designed the Royal Ontario Museum, who designed the original Art Gallery of Ontario, who designed Convocation Hall. This is one of the landmarks of the city. So in thinking about the school going forward and our continuing in the future to occupy a wing of this school, the East Wing, the Huron Street Wing, we're beginning with that sense of history, physical history and academic and intellectual history. 
And how do we exploit what are those characteristics then? Perhaps with the Huron Street entrance being always an important entrance to the school, but the potential for being more important, the more prime, in the sense that it is the opportunity to create a plaza, an urban space at the corner, at the kind of crossroads in the city, perhaps a spe speaker's corner, a space to gather before and after school, a place to, uh, to kind of meet friends, to work outdoors and have classes outdoors in good weather. Just like at the Emily Carr University that we're building in Vancouver, that space of interface between the city and the school is, is a kind of key issue. But there's another new opportunity that's part of the world of this new school, and that is the park. The park at, on Huron Street has always been in the background. The school has never been oriented. Now we have the opportunity to connect to the park, that it can be a, glee, a green living room, again, a place for um, all the kind of activities, intellectual and otherwise, that you, you undertake in a park. And so that park can be embedded and pulled into the school in a kind of profound new way, um, in, an, in a really positive way. And in this, what will be a view from one of the corridors on the Huron Wing, suddenly natural light and view to the park, connected to the park and accessible at the lower level. That the park is, a, just as there is the city edge at the corner, there'll be the green edge at the south. Sorry. Um, I can't get it to switch. That, I think I, did I? But at the same time, there is the opportunity for the park and the city and to connect to the community. Because not only does the, the school exist in the city, it exists in a community of neighbors. And a living lane, the laneway system that runs south on Washington and down south to the university is being recast as a living lane and, uh, that will connect the community to the school. And as you move north towards a new south entrance to the school, one of three entrances to the school, that community connection is possible. And as you enter the school, that sense of welcome and transparency, glass, visual connection to the park, and access through to the spaces to the north will be part of that circumstance. So connecting heritage, building on that opportunity, but then building the kind of modern future. Sorry. What's the, what's the possibility in the, in the new space of the school is where the parking lot now is in the south corner of the Huron Street Wing is a vertical space of community, a set of stairs and terraces and study terraces that are suspended in space where you can connect from the lowest floors to the upper floors through those four floors filled with natural light places to gather, and so part of the daily movement through the school, meeting friends and colleagues, teachers and, and, and the students you're with, always encountering them because you're at the crossroads. But those crossroads are simply not a stair to move you from level to level, but a place of gathering, a place for um, group study, a place for social activity, a, great, a place for learning and, and classes. Just like in this, in this space, there can be small and individual places to study, separate from the classroom, separate from the lab, separate from the library, but in a way that can be very social and connected in, in, in light and in public space. That you can have those sort of connective tissues as you move from floor to floor, where in the foreground in this image, there can be the space for the individual to work, but in an open common area but that there's also on the kind of terraces which connect level to level places for study and, and gathering as groups, whether socially or to do work. In what is now the gymnasium in the Huron Street Wing, can that be converted to the library? Within that in space, a library which has suspended in it pods for study, spot, pods for gathering, and, that, and in that way connect the main floor of the school, 
with the second floor of the school so that you enter at two levels and that library becomes a sort of connective space. It's no longer a destination. It's a place that you move through and, and, and make connection. Can we think of the walls in the, in the building, the existing walls in the corridor, the new uh, walls in the kind of modern spaces as surfaces, surfaces for new media, surfaces for projection, for activity, for, for, for video, for engagement, but also for things like living biofilters, because the school needs truly a sustainable design dimension. It needs to be low energy, needs to be as net carb close to net energy zero and net carbon zero as we can make it. But if we can incorporate living biofilters, instead of replacing the filters to keep the air clean um, in the interior like you do in the furnace in your house, a living biofilter becomes an active filtration system that's proven science um, in terms of how it makes better indoor air quality. And the air quality with a living biofilter cleans 85% of the particulate and uh, uh, matters in, in air and is a kind of vastly higher air quality than you can get in a conventional mechanical environment. So we can use walls in that way. Can we position places for food to cook together, to eat together, to kind of meet at lunch or in the morning or, or at the end of school or in kind of breaks around places which are social and connected um, that really engage all the communities that make the school um, come together around food? And can we make classrooms more than simply four walls with windows and a door, but something that is flexible, that has furniture that can move, that allows different configurations and setups, that allows power and, and service um, um, to convert labs into classrooms, into, into performance spaces, and connect to the outdoors and open to the outdoors? Can we think of the classrooms really as sort of academic communities where there are clusters of sm space for, sm for small seminars and discussion, for teachers to have their offices woven through the space, spaces to, for groups to move out into the corridor to work on a project and re-engage with the community in, in the school? Sorry And do so in a way where there's a kind of flexibility of use that each room doesn't have a defined name, but there is a kind of uh, flexibility of interpretation of how you can use different spaces in the school. Of course, we will have two extraordinary gymnasiums, which are actually going to be tucked under the, the park and will be naturally lit from above. Um, but that sense of academic life, um, life, the life of music in the school, the life of art in the school, the art of, of physical athletics in the school, and a great new 700-seat auditorium that supports music, drama, film, video, lectures that can be shared with the community, can be shared with the university, um, but really is fundamentally a place that's, that's designed to be used and support the community of, of all the students in the school. So if we can combine all this outreach to the city, the space for green lungs um, in, in that outdoor room, the space for connection to community, um, welcoming the community, the flexibility of how you move through the school, the places for connection and, and social activity that are embedded in the DNA in the building, this, all the kind of spaces for, for, that are equipped with flexibility um, to support labs and music and gymnasia and theaters, can we really think of the school and can we make the school um, reflect the world and the world be more like UTS? So thank you very much.